This is a look at the destruction. Wood Buffalo Forest is still evacuating and still under the constant threat of the beast. Everyone who lives there was forced from their home as crews continue to do their best to stop the flames from spreading. I'm Edward Linebridge, and this is PET News. Animals are now miles away from the fire that continues to rage out of control. But warm weather and high winds are only fueling. We're in the next forest town, three hours south, where animals are being welcomed with open paws. As the forest burns, donations are flooding in. Water, food, clothing. All the essentials that animals didn't have time to bring with them. What have the last few days been like for you and your family? It's been a roller coaster of emotions. We don't know what the future is going to hold for us. We think our den is still standing. My sister-in-law just lost her burrow yesterday to the beast. We're just thankful we're all together. Oh man, it was like something right out of a movie. Whoosh! You never saw anything like this in your whole life. As I was swimming, right, I could see the beast stretch across the side of the pond. The flames were as, they were as high as the trees. Can you describe the community in Wood Buffalo and how you were feeling? Well, it's not a matter of if we're gonna have a fire in this area. It's just when and whether or not we can be ready for it. So right now, we don't need a sprinkle. We don't need showers. We need a downpour of help because we only have one road out of this cussing forest. I'm here now with Ms. Greyhorns, who was at home waiting for her husband when the ash started falling from above. Walk us through how you managed to escape. Well, we left our house, but as soon as I turned out of my little side street, I was stuck in traffic. While this was happening, Ms. Greyhorns had to take care of her calf alone. She thought her life was over as flames surrounded her car, filling it with smoke. Then she called her husband. Can you tell us the first thing you said to him? I called him and said, Lauren, I'm gonna die and I'm not gonna make it out of here. There's just flames everywhere and I don't know what to do. Traffic wasn't moving, so the one thing keeping me calm was talking to my husband. But then I lost reception. It, it was frightening. I was just trying to breathe, really. 
I just took a couple of videos of myself just to kind of have something to talk to and just to tell my loved ones that I love them. I just kept holding this little guy close to me because I actually thought I was going to have to get out and run. The one thing keeping her calm was talking to her husband who was meeting them in this nearby town, but she asked herself if they would even get there. But luckily, here we are. This has been very hard for me. But I'm so relieved to know my wife and son are safe. We are very fortunate. Not everyone is so lucky. Uh, my herd lost their home. Everyone that I roamed with in that grassland... It, uh, I've been here longer than most. Proud to say I'm born and raised, and this, this is just wrong. <sighs> Dogs and cats were also welcome to the relief center for free food and vet care. Not everyone had time to get to their owners. These animals were stranded. Yes, by I was firing up a scoff when I heard someone running through the camp hollering, we gotta get out of here. So I barked at him and I asked him, what the wolf is going on? And he said, there's a fire across the road. There's a fire across the road. And he walked me down to his room and we watched from the balcony and it seemed to be spreading real fast, real quick, you know. I about died. Me and my wife were away for the weekend. We felt helpless. Our son was working the night shift that evening, so he was at home asleep. He is a good boy, very smart, an engineer, but he never answered his phone. So I just kept calling and calling. It was the worst feeling in the world, but thank the stars he picked up. But still, it's been exhausting. Emotionally exhausting, watching our friends' homes being destroyed by the beast. I am very worried about our community. This is remote Honey Sands country, and it seems this catastrophe has united them all. Everyone is helping. Everywhere we flew, animals were asking, are you all right? Do you need a nest for the night? Do you need food? It does seem like an incredibly strong forest that's holding each other up at the moment. It is, it's been amazing. I sent out tweets letting other birds and bats know that there are free worms, free clothes, everything that'll make you safe. <laughs> it's, it's like an instant family, as we all anxiously watch together. My heart goes out to all the firefighters and I'm so glad to see that right across the world there is support for our forest. It must be physically and emotionally exhausting for you. Yeah, we all have busted up hooves and paws, burnt fur and singed feathers. But the hardest part is no sleep. I think I've had a total of eight hours of shut-eye in three days. And I'm not even the worst off. Everybody's going through the same hell. One bird I work with went 40 hours of flying without sleep. I mean, we're hauling hoses, we're going up and down hills, we're fighting 40-foot flames. It's been just one structure after another going up. Only now we're finally gaining ground. I, for one, am in awe of the work you're doing. And there are many animals all over the world that are calling you firefighters heroes. How do you feel about that? Um, sorry. I don't consider myself a hero. All the emergency responders, the police, the volunteers that have left their homes to travel up here to the middle of this beast to help protect my forest. 
they are the real heroes to me. But I'm doing my best. Really, we're all working hard to take care of each other here. So I'm in a company of heroes. We don't have a choice. It's not like we can just leave and watch our home burn. We can't do that. It's not in us. Coined the beast. It devoured everything in its path. Destroying homes within minutes, nothing stood a chance against the beast's power. The animals of wood buffalo are used to wildfires. Lightning strikes are common, but this was different. It quickly became bigger than New York City. Trying to fight it was pointless. The only option was to get out. Over 88,000 animals were forced to run for their lives. This is a very emotional day. We are here to mourn and remember all that the beast took from us, our homes, baby photos, and all the belongings that helped anchor so many cherished memories. But in showing us the worst, the beast brought out the best. The spirit of our forest is brave, caring, and undefeated. The fast action, hard work, and the dedication of these first responders have saved our home. I'm told we lost about 2,500 structures, but we rescued over 25,000, including the hospital, municipal buildings, and every functioning school. Thank you. I've spoken to my ancestors from the forest, and no one has ever seen anything like this. The way the beast happened, the way it traveled, the way it behaved, we are now rewriting our policies and procedures. This was way bigger than anything we have ever encountered, but I'm happy to announce that we have survived the beast. The worst is behind us, and we have now set up a 24-hour crisis line, along with a team of trained professionals ready to help rebuild our city. Nobody feels guiltier than me and those firefighters that we didn't save every property. In those early days, we didn't have the resources to do so, but I've been a firefighter since 1983, and the outpouring of support from other first responders was unbelievable. It was so heartwarming, and I felt so grateful that they came to help our forest. I didn't call or ask anyone to come. They just trundled up that highway and came to help us. There wasn't a lot to eat, a lot to drink, and you didn't get much sleep, but they did a wonderful job, and I know all the animals of Wood Buffalo thank them very much. In Wood Buffalo, the school year ended abruptly last May. The principal, Mr. Moose, says when students file back into class, mental health specialists will be on hand. No running, please. OK, I'm ready. When you were forced to flee the fire, most children were in school. Are you concerned that the return could be a trigger point? There will be challenges throughout the year. For example, the first fire drill. What will that actually look like? How will we prepare the students for that? Because for some students, that was a very traumatic incident. And for a few, the beast still lives with them in their thoughts and in their feelings. Most people living here will tell you the city doesn't seem as busy as it used to be. When the price of honey started to drop two years ago, the exit began. But after the fire, the prices per jar hit an all-time low. Many businesses lost staff members. The majority are operating, but most have limited hours. A few haven't opened, and it's not clear when they will. Moving companies have swamped. 
In some cases, they are packing up homes for animals who evacuated and never returned. Can you hear meow? Loud and clear. Meow? Start anytime. Meow? Start anytime. Again, we are recording. But where was I? Oh, yeah, uh, we were told to go home and pack a bag. I packed the most random things. Uh, I was thinking 48 hours I'll be back home. I never thought we'd be gone this long. When Grandpa's was forced out of Wood Buffalo, he and his owner decided to stay in Spruce Grove. When he was allowed back in, he didn't go right away because he was concerned about poor air quality. It's really nice being so close to the city. There's so many different services. You don't have to wait as long for veterinarian appointments and checkups. It really opened my eyes to how isolated we were. You were telling me earlier about some of the horrific stories you were watching on the news. Oh, yeah. I saw this one. Uh, it was for cat food. And uh, at the end of it, it says, all natural food for your cat. All natural food? Cat food's made out of horse meat. Yeah, that's the way it works in nature. The cat, right above the horse in the food chain. I was talking about the beast. Children, let me assure you, cat food is not made from horse meat. That's how it feels in Wood Buffalo. Life has resumed, but it's not like it was before. Streets are lined with signs urging animals to be resilient and strong. While preparing to begin demolition, many animals like the bears are still dealing with insurance claims. Visiting what's left of their property doesn't get any easier. It's gonna take a little while to get adjusted. We're in a new neighborhood now, but it just doesn't feel like home. I really, I really miss the old cave. Seeing this destruction, it's really, really tough. This is my second time back, so it's getting a little easier. Most of our possessions were either burned by the fire or severely damaged with smoke and 20,000 gallons of water. I remember talking to friends and some family, and we were all thinking there was a small or no chance of the beast hopping over the river, but, but as we all know now, it, it did. The bear's daughters spent the majority of the past four months away from the forest. After being evacuated, they finished off their school year in the mountains, where they were staying with family. At this point, it's just important that we are able to stay together and have some sort of normalcy in this crazy devastation. We are waiting to see how our cubs are coping with this stuff. We know it was very traumatic for them. My uh, four-year-old cub, she's still struggling. There was one day where I had to run over to the school and pick her up after a scheduled fire drill. With winter around the corner, the bears are doubtful that any rebuilding can begin this fall. Despite their hardships, they've never considered leaving Wood Buffalo Forest. My plan is to hit the ground running in the summer and hopefully we'll be in by Christmas next year. We will build it back, and it'll be just as beautiful or more beautiful, if anything. It's just a new appreciation of everything. It's a perspective gained at a time when so much else was lost, and it's one they'll try to hold on to during the months ahead as they settle into a new normal, as their old neighborhood slowly begins to transform. Wildlife have a long-standing relationship with fire, and fire is a natural part of these landscapes. Some of you predators could have seen the fleeing species as an opportunity for snacking. And that is why I'm so proud we are able to survive without eating our fellow animal. The resilience of the citizens of Wood Buffalo Forest is an example to us all. Once more, when the flames rose up, you animals didn't just sit there and wait to be cooked alive. You did what you do best. Birds flew away. Mammals ran. 
Amphibians and other small creatures burrowed into the ground. I even heard the story of an elk who took refuge in a stream. <laughs> it's a funny image. The point is we do what we have to do to survive. Animals should not look at this burnt forest and think it's dead. It's not dead, it's just changed. It's a whole new habitat. As a country, we require this reset. But what exactly happens after the beast depends on us? Let's all use this as a lesson for change and a chance to grow. The best time to plant a tree was 20 years ago. The second best time is right now. We will rebuild and we will be stronger. So as of today, I am proud to announce that the government will be matching all donations made out to the Canadian Red Paws. Today is not the end of this story. The rebuilding, renewal, and regrowth will continue to happen. Our thoughts and our prayers are with all the animals of Wood Buffalo Forest. At its high point, the beast traveled at a rate of 40 meters per minute and created its own weather. A black funnel cloud at the heart of the fire grew so large it could be seen from space. In total, the Wood Buffalo wildfire burned an area of 590,000 hectares, or 365,000 soccer fields. Its largest perimeter was 1,080 kilometers. The cause is unknown, but officials have ruled out lightning and say it was likely caused by human activity. Go figure. This was the largest prolonged evacuation in Canadian history. And thankfully, no one died. I am not a religious lion, but this is truly a miracle. And tonight in Wood Buffalo, they are celebrating just that. We'll now go live to their volunteer appreciation night. We will close this report on a good note. This has been a public service announcement. Your host, Jack Rabbit, PET News. A new day rises from the ashes. A new hope rises from the pain. This is not the end of the story. First the fire, then the rain. This will be a new beginning, a time to grow. Let's go.
Again.